Hi, so today I'm going to be giving a little bit of a talk about uh, reptiles and the education of children, or just reptiles and how to uh, integrate them into your child's life so that we're not uh, bringing in fear, so that we're not bringing in uh, those, those feelings of terror that we think that we're born with, but in a lot of cases are not exactly innate. So today we're going to be talking about snakes, lizards, turtles. Um, some of those things probably... Uh, triggered some kind of fear response in you. Uh, most likely a shiver or, you know, something that, that tells your brain that you are in danger. Um, are you in danger, though? That's what we're going to look at today, and we're going to look at how our children perceive those kind of fears versus how we look at them and how we can help our children to uh, not see that as so much of a threat. So, um, research has found that on average 5% of the population, it doesn't seem like a lot, but it is, 5% of the population uh, is outward about their fear of reptiles. Again, that's snakes, lizards, turtles. 5% um, is a big number, and that's only those that are outward. So when you're thinking about people that are outward, you're thinking about people that are saying, I'm scared of that, don't show me that, I hate that. Um, but I, I guarantee you the number is a lot larger when you stop and you look at people that the fear is more internal. Uh, the fears are not as present or they don't express them as much, it's particularly in males. Males don't usually express the fear of sn uh, snakes and, and lizards and things like that because, you know, they're, they're, they're males. But in most cases, they have that... Um, that if a robber broke into my house, I would go and open some of the snake cages because whether it's a six-foot-tall man or five-foot-one woman, people are scared of snakes. Um, how can that affect our children, though? As a biologist in training and an avid reptile keeper, I always pay close attention to how children react to certain kinds of animals, particularly snakes, in my case. Um, are children born with the fear of snakes? Uh, it's possible. Uh, research has shown that when babies were shown pictures of snakes, most babies reacted with larger pupils, which means um, that a stress response was shown in their brain. This is probably this is probably due to the fight or flight response that we received uh, back when this fear was necessary. Back when we were training to be afraid of these animals because of the threat they posed to humanity. However, in these days, we don't really have to do that. So here's one of the hard facts. The main, one of the main points that I'm presenting today is that reptiles are a key point in our lives and that whether it's all the time or maybe only a little bit, uh, our children are going to be exposed to reptiles in one way or another. So how can we train them to help reduce that fear anxiety, to help reduce that and replace it with education? One of the main ways that I work to do that is through just that, education. Um, According to Melissa Kaplan's Herp Care Collection, reptiles are neither less dangerous than other animals, and like other animals, some are more appropriate than others for use in certain educational settings. The use of reptiles, however, may provide more opportunities for growth and change given the largely negative view of, held by them by the public. Again, according to Sarah Gibbons of Nat Geo Research Team, states that more than one-fifth of the population are afraid of reptiles and that social learning can curve the fear at a young age. So when I say social learning, what does that mean? Uh, here on my property where we do um, the zoo handling, we let the kids come in and experience the animals, we make educational videos about the animals. Some ways that we curve that fear um, is simply by introducing the kids to the animals. A lot of kids may have seen a snake in the wild, they may have come across a snake at a zoo, um, and they're, they're only getting that, that distant look and of course they're getting what their parents are telling them, whether that's good or bad. Um, but in my place, in my experience, one way that we're working to integrate kids um, with reptiles is by letting them get hands on with the animals. Um, you know, whether that's feeling the scales, whether that's, you know, looking at the eyes, looking at the patterns. And even if your kid is, is not quite keen on touching the snakes, there are a number of ways that we work to also integrate those things into our daily lives. Like, um, like snake skins. I have, of course, hundreds of snake skins here, um, and I use those to educate the kids, to show them, maybe help prepare them for a future where they may be dealing with snakes. Um, another point that I briefly want to touch on is uh, ways that we as 
adults or you as parents can work to help your kids understand snakes and other reptiles is by creating, uh, being creative, being thoughtful, maybe um, doing a role play situation where your child may come across a snake in the yard, um, teach them how to interact with that snake nicely, teach them how to back up, how to know what to do, what not to do, and what can be dangerous. You can also lead your kids to make uh, graphs, charts, and um, pretend snakes, things like that, so they kind of understand more um, the anatomy of a snake. One thing that definitely scares people a lot, if, if you were to ask me, are it's snakes and how they work. Uh, we're not quite used to something that doesn't have legs. Um, reptiles of all sorts are the same way. Lizards have a very, very, very uh, strange pattern to us that we're not used to. Um, we don't, we're not, no, normal is not the feel of scales to us. Um, and so we really need to work to find a new normal there. Let's talk about danger in reptiles. Danger is a very real thing in reptiles. Um, and that's something that I think it's important to touch on as well. If you're going to look at one side, you also need to look at another. It would be wrong of me to say that reptiles are not dangerous, that they are completely safe all the time. You need to teach your kids to do whatever they want to do. That's not true. Um, recent studies show that more than 1,300 kids are bitten by snakes each year. That's a brand new study that just came out. In that case, we're talking about venomous snakes, more specifically, uh, the, co uh, the copperhead that's found here in West Virginia, um, as well as other mountainous states. So the number of uh, snake bites in kids is actually increasing, which is a little strange considering I feel that our fear of them is also increasing. Um, but ways that we can cut down on that fear, but also cut down on the number of bites that we're experiencing is by teaching our kids the right things to do and by being smart about how they interact and knowing that all, all snakes are friendly snakes. Okay, so that's all I have for you guys for today. But you can always send me messages, email me, and I'll be happy to answer some of your questions. Okay, thank you.